Do you think the adversary of the devil is coming against the United States in the courts of heaven right now? Absolutely. I believe I believe one, one of the things that I've been doing uh, ever since before the election and now after it and all the aftermath uh, is I have just been consistent you know, on a personal level, but also in many, many different prayer meetings. We have been contending in the court of heaven because I tell people, I say, I believe I do believe in the sovereignty of God. What I'm about to say doesn't mean I don't believe in the sovereignty of God. I believe God can do what God wants to do when he wants to do it because he's God. But having said that, I believe that the church is afflicted with a hyper view of God's sovereignty and not realizing the position that we actually play. I mean, the truth is, if we didn't play a vital role in God's will being done in the earth, in, 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 the, in, in, in the planet, then Jesus wouldn't have taught us to pray. Whenever he said, when you pray, say, your, uh, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our job is to move in the spirit. And I, and I tell people, I say, prayer is not uh, us trying to convince God to do something. Prayer is us coming into an agreement with who God is and out of that agreement, heaven and the spiritual realm shifting so his will can be done in the earth. So I do believe we are contending against legal claims that the adversary says he has against our nation. And we have been seeking to undo those claims and, and ask that righteous judgments would come out of the court of heaven in regards to our nation and the destiny that God would have ordained for it. What's going to happen going forward, do you think? Well, of course, I don't know. You know, I, <laughs> I've never claimed to be a prophet. Um, uh, you know, I don't, that's not really who I'm. I mean, I'm a believer that is prophetic. I mean, all of us have a, have a responsibility, according to John 10, to hear the voice of God. The Bible says that my sheep hear my voice. Another they will not follow. So, so we all have the ability and the responsibility to hear the voice of God. So I'm not claimed to be a prophet and say, oh, well, I know this and I know that, even though there have been points in times where I have had revelation about some things that were on the horizon and that did materialize, it actually did happen. But coming up into this new year, into 2021, um, you know, I actually, I actually, Jim spoke a word uh, yesterday, or yeah, yesterday at this taping. I spoke a word about uh, uh, out of Psalms chapter twenty-nine, verse I think it's seven, and this is what it said: His voice divides the flames. And what? I, because I was actually dreaming that one night, and that's a you know I don't think about that scripture, but I was just dreaming it. It said, "His voice divides the flames." And I, what I knew in my dream as I was dreaming it, that God was separating the, the fire, the fiery places that we would walk through, and he was letting us walk through them without being burned. And I honestly believe that we're probably entering some very intense times of testings, of afflictions. Of, but at the same time, I believe God divides the flames. Just like he said in Isaiah 43, you'll walk through the fire and you will not be burned. And then I actually taught of, out of the three Hebrew children, out of Daniel 3, how that when God, when they were put into the flame because they would not bow, they had already made their mind up, we're not going to bow. We are going to be faithful to our God. And God delivered them. But they went into the fire, but God delivered them. He divided the flame so that they passed through untouched. Here's the interesting. You think you talked about trauma a while ago. The Bible says not even the smell of smoke was on them. And this is what I told the people. I said, guess what? I said, it's one thing to go through the fire and get to the other side and say, we made it. It's another thing not to have the smell of smoke or not to be traumatized so that it begins to affect the way you think, affect the way you relate, affect the way you respond, that there was no trauma associated with what they had walked through, that God had not only delivered them from the fire, but he had delivered them from the trauma or the smell of smoke associated with it. And I believe God is going to do that to his, for his people. We're going to see God bring great deliverance for us wherever we might need it. 